All right. What do we got here? People who do not know how to drive, as usual. It's okay. Just gotta pay attention. All right, now what are we gonna say? All right, what's well, July right now? Monsoon season, which in some ways is a good thing because, geez, we get a lot of rain. Now, ordinarily, for most motorcyclists in more developed countries, for whom, for whom motorcycling is just a sport and not so much a means of transport, rain is not a good thing. And for, uh, for good reasons. I mean, you get less traction and uh, you got less vision. So it's understandable why most people would not like rain. But living in the tropics and having to drive everywhere for commuting, if it rains every couple of days, you will get, especially if you get a nice hard rain of like an hour or so, absolute downpour, a thunderstorm. It cools the air and it cools the land off a lot. And so just this morning, we had a nice quick thunder shower of about 20 minutes. And then, as you can see, it's cleared up. What this does is it cools the whole place off and it also cleans the air. The sunny, clear weather you see is largely because of the rainstorm. Had we uh, had dry weather for, let's say, four or five days, you wouldn't be able to see the skyline. It would be so much smoke and smog and particulates in the air. So it's actually a very nice thing to have rain every few days, at least, every two or three days, because it cleans out the air and it cools everything off. So that's why, that's one of the benefits of July, uh, the monsoon, you know, mid midsummer, let's say. Early summer, May and early June, uh, can be quite hot, ridiculously hot, because you frequently don't have a lot of rain. It's pre-monsoon. But once you get into June, you get some regular rain in July as well. And it kind of cools things off just a little bit. And every little bit helps. Uh, they have tried to block people off from using this to bring their bikes down, and it just isn't working. People will just bring their bikes down. And they will drive the wrong way on this tiny, dangerous bridge. This is the railroad bridge, the Long Bien Bridge, as we call it. We are going over this little agricultural island in the river. And here comes somebody on their bike. And uh, I could, you know, play chicken with them, and I, I want to. But uh, you really shouldn't get too enthusiastic about that because there's not a lot of margin for error on this road. And the cops just do not stop people. It's extremely dangerous to be going the wrong way down this tiny, tiny road. It's about eight feet wide with steel on either side. And the cops just won't stop them. Whatever. We've already had two and a half accidents on this bridge over the past six years. Um, and I say half because one of them, I really wasn't on the bridge anymore. I had exited and it just kind of uh, hit the front brake too hard and dropped the bike. So yes, I hurt myself, but fortunately it was at low speed going like 15 miles an hour. And technically I really wasn't on the bridge. So kind of half, half of a crash. 
I don't know. Ah, but I just really try to take it easy, go only 20 miles an hour, and uh, concentrate on what's going on ahead of me. Ah, man. So generally speaking, now summer in Vietnam is not the time for long motorcycle trips because it's just so hot. It's so hot. Adjust my microphone. As I was saying, this is really not the time for road trips. Ordinarily, in a lot of temperate countries, let's say New Zealand, the UK, US, Sweden, etc. Who knows? Japan. Summer is motorcycling season. But here in Vietnam, and in Hanoi in particular, it is not. It's just so hot. Um, particularly in the lowlands, because, um, yeah, you can get well north of body temperature weather, basically. Body temperature. And with full... With full humidity, it even just driving and not, you know, with the wind going over you, wearing as, you know, even if you're not wearing a full motorcycle jacket, you're wearing just like a, a net mesh pad harness. You can just be absolutely drenched in sweat. But occasionally, you can do some road tripping. For example, if you do get some rainy weather that's just short rainstorms, it can cool off the, the daytime enough so that is provided you keep moving and provided you're not on really wide, hot, roasting roads with high heat index, let's say you're in the countryside, uh, and provided that you dress fairly lightly, oh, hello, uh, you can take road trips. And then also off-road, I do a lot of off-road, and it's just really quite dangerous in the summer. You gotta really take it easy drink a lot of fluids and salts and sugars and stuff like that. Uh, but one of the things you can do with off-roading is try to go early in the morning. Uh, also, with off-roading, you want to start early in the morning, say 6 to 7. And you also want to try to go to areas where there is either a good amount of shade, like in forests, or you're at altitude in the mountains. You know, if you're at, let's say, 500 meters, 12, 1,500 feet above sea level, it will make a small difference. And then if you're at, let's say, 1,000 meters, that's 3,000 feet or so, it makes a lot of difference. So, generally speaking, you cannot do much in this, or should I say, generally speaking, in the summer, it's not the season for motorcycling because your options are very, very limited. And you, there's a lot of, um, what do you call it? A lot of constraints, factors that could constrain you. Now, as you can see, I'm just in long pants and sneakers, t-shirt, and uh, no gloves, but a full face helmet. And a lot of people would think that this is very squid-like. But as you can see, everybody drives like that. And um, having long pants and full, fully enclosed shoes is actually kind of, you know, overkill. Because we usually just do shorts and flip-flops. But I have dropped this bike, all 400 pounds of it, in flip-flops. And believe you me, it is not fun. It doesn't feel good at all. Shut my engine off. 
so I don't overheat. Luckily, this thing's liquid cooled. This was some sort of air cooled Harley. I would be screwed in this weather, in this traffic. All my bikes are liquid cooled. It's not absolutely necessary, but for larger, so called larger bikes, meaning let's say more than a more than 200 cc's you're going to want liquid cooling and yes in this country anything over 150 cc's is considered fairly big and anything that's let's say let's say this size of like 400 400 and more is considered very big and stuff that's over let's say 800 is just ridiculous ridiculously big that's like a car when i tell people that this bike the, the average person who's oh a nice bike man the vietnamese person and they they ask me you know how big is it how much uh, how many cc's and I, I tell them 400 they just they just go oh my gosh 400 i thought it was a 250 and uh you know it's kind of funny because in a lot of countries uh, you know, that's kind of a restricted class. Australia, you know, Japan, and of course the U.S. said this is like a kid's bike, basically. Anything below 650 is kid's bikes. Mm. All right, we're coming up on... Our work workplace. It's very bright. I wish I'd brought my sunglasses, but my sunglasses are polarized, so I wouldn't be able to look clearly through my plastic visor without chromatic aberration. So maybe I shouldn't have gotten polarized sunglasses. Oh well. Hmm, I wonder how these aftermarket pipes sound. I'll have to check the audio later. This bike handles best above 3,000 RPMs. You start to lug the engine below it. And um, you get the most power between mm, four and a half to 6,000. And after 6,000, this guy's not paying attention, so I have to pay attention for him. After 6,000, you're going to start um, getting close to the rev limiter. You can go all the way up to 7.5, but I don't recommend it. So this isn't your stereotypical... Oh, how? Yes, you, you're welcome. Please do a U-turn. This isn't your stereotypical low low lugging lazy eh, come on let me through let me through let me through low lugging lazy massive air cooled push rod v8 it, it is not but it's not what i want for this kind of climate 400 cc's on these roads is plenty big in fact it's almost too big Hey, kid, what's up? No helmet. Kids don't count, you know. The laws of physics do not apply to children, to small children when it comes to motorcycles here. Oh, wear your helmet for safety. Ah, kids, the laws of physics don't apply to them. It's okay for them. Yeah, I know. Being a little bit facetious. All right, well, that's it. Remember, pay attention out here because uh, you know nobody else is.